Hey, welcome back to the Dadpreneur Podcast. I'm your host, Alex Oliveira, and today I'm going to be talking to you about AI and chat GPT. We know it's all the rage everywhere I go. That's all people want to talk about. It's the number one most searched topic on Google, on Bing, on social media, at business conferences. That's all people are talking about, right? How can you use ChatGPT or all the other AI tools that are coming out that is using OpenAI's uh, technology? What, how can we become more productive? Uh, what are the use cases, whether it's for sales, for customer service, automation of certain tasks? These are all important questions. And you're going to find a use case for just about everything, whether you're trying to create more content, whether you're trying to analyze data, create images with Midjourney or Dolly, these are some of the other tools that you're gonna find out there. There are tools for videos, there are tools for creating presentations, webinars, translation, the list goes on and on and on. And even in the education space, you are seeing every day different companies come out and, and talk about the AI chat bot that they've created using chat GPT. So again, chat GPT was launched back in uh, November uh, to the public, November of last year uh, from open AI and open AI has been around for uh, about five years now. So this isn't necessarily new technology. They've built it on top of Google's uh, technology, learning language models, and um, it, it's just exploded in the last five months. You know, I've been using it since December, but really got into it in January. And from Chat GPT, GPT 3.5 to, to 4, you've seen the differences, how fast it goes, right? And even just the developments of all the other tools that are coming out in the market every day. There are so many apps like Auto GPT, Hugging Face, and, and so many others that are coming out. And, you know, everyone is in this race for um, AI, basically, you know, and, and these tools, most of them are free. Some of them are paid, um, but ultimately everyone is building something to help you become more productive and, and have a, um, a better results, right? And so the way I think about it is it, it's not necessarily that it's going to, I don't think eliminate millions of jobs maybe it will uh you know but but not today because people will have to learn how to use the tool so i don't think it'll eliminate jobs today but maybe within the next six to 12 months there will be jobs that will be eliminated but i only think that those jobs and those people will lose their jobs if they don't learn how to use the tool right so the way i explain it to most people is like if you're pretty good at what you do let's say you have five years experience in your field well, if you start to use ChatGPT and the AI tools that are in the market for your use case, for whatever task you're doing, whatever project you're working on, basically that just means that you're going to be your your yourself times 10, right? 10x yourself. Uh, you can't clone yourself, but you can make yourself more uh, of an expert and more productive and, and streamline things. And Think about it this way. I think all of us, even if you love what you do, you love your job, you love your career, love your business, we all have things that we don't love doing day in, day out. There are tasks throughout the day. For example, who loves reading email or responding to emails? Well, guess what? You can build sequences to respond to certain emails. Not, not all of them, okay? Because clearly you're going to have clients that you want to filter out, employees. So certain emails are going to be filtered that way. And by the way, it, it, that's already being done, right? Like if you have a Gmail account for years now, the Gmail itself will, the, the AI puts promotions in a promotion folder, social on a social folder, and then so on, right? You have your actual inbox. And then you can white label and black label or whitelist certain emails. So this is this is not new. It's just that the tools now are user friendly and on the front end and are fast enough, right? So again, it, you know, the technology, it's, it's, it's interesting because over the last three years, all we, we kept hearing about was TikTok, uh, NFTs, Web3, which by the way, AI is part of Web3, but you know, cryptocurrency, of course. Um, and, and that's, that's all we heard about. 
those, those were the things that uh, when it comes to technology and business, that's all people were talking about. And, and now all anyone wants to talk about is artificial intelligence and, and machine learning and how you can use it. And what I say to everyone, and I've been out, out at conferences and, and attending lots of webinars, meeting with clients, using ChatGPT for some of our clients, for some of our own content and projects and analytics. What I say is like this, it's if, if you're committed to your career and to your business, then you can't afford not to train yourself or your staff, right? And, and it's no different than a tool like, you know, Microsoft Office, whether it was Word or Spreadsheet, PowerPoints. At some point, you didn't put that in your resume anymore. It was just expected that you would be proficient at using those basic tools. The same thing with a smartphone or emails or logging into a social media account or a LinkedIn. You, 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 you wouldn't tell a potential employer or a client that, hey, I can't use these tools. I don't know how to use these tools. You know, I, I remember a time when I was in college, this is 23 years ago, and I went to work at a credit union, Fairwinds Credit Union in Orlando as a bank teller. And I was really excited. They trained me for two weeks at their corporate headquarter on three pieces of software. Now, the, the software, the applications, it, compared to what we do today, would be like three simple apps, right? Like any app that you use has hundreds of functions, uh, and, and commands and prompts. That's all the apps were, but these were applications that we worked on the desktop to do all the transactions that you would do in a bank. And it took two weeks for them to train us. And I remember the training module was so uh, cumbersome and, and, and it took so long for the facilitator to go through all the different pages and the guides. And, and then we did, you know, uh, simulation. It, it was crazy. And now, Forget three software, when you, three pieces of software or applications, when you go into a job or you meet with a client, you're expected to know hundreds. And in any field, really, it doesn't matter the field that you're in, you are probably between your smartphone and your desktop at work. You're probably using a minimum of 30 to 40 applications to get your job done, right? That's most people. And so unless you're doing very heavy labor intensive work, but even in that case, right, I have contractors that come to my house and they're using their tablet and their, their smartphones to take pictures and enter notes into the CRM. So, you know, the, the technology that, that we've all been using, we're, we're, we're already conditioned to just step into something uh, like a new technology. Uh, we're expected to just step into it and learn it. So, don't be afraid of AI. Don't be afraid of ChatGPT. And, and you're already seeing a lot of scammers. I see it on YouTube. I see certain creators and influencers on TikTok calling themselves AI experts or prompt engineers. And, and so you're going to have to be careful because the, 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 the bad actors are out there to make money. And they're going to disrupt your industry if you're not careful and, and potentially take market share from you, right? And everybody wants to make a quick buck. But the, the, the reality is a prompt engineer is just someone who actually understands the limitations of the chat GPT or AI, understands how to articulate uh, a command and ask a question. And if you're a good conversationalist, let's say if you are a good interviewer, investigator, a good journalist, if you're someone who is typically good at doing those things, I have salespeople are great at this, customer service people, uh, managers, then guess what? You're going to do great with ChatGPT. Even if you say, I am not great at technology, you're going to do great. You're probably already a prompt engineer. And you'll start to create your own cheat sheet for prompts. Like right now, I have upwards of a thousand prompts for all the different uh, uh, departments in my company for how I go about asking ChatGPT. Now, certain prompts are a little bit more in-depth because it, it becomes a conversation right? No different than I would have if I had a, 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 if I had a conversation with my assistant, it might be a five, six minute conversation to give you a task and we go back and forth and then they ask me the question. So, you know, the, the, the good news is you don't have to waste any money or time in learning chat GPT. You just have to get an account for free or pay the one for $20 a month and start to tinker with it, explore it. 
really, it, that's all you got to do. Now, there are a lot of different um, um, thought leaders and companies that I'm happy to connect you with the listener, if you if you guys are listening and you want to email me directly, it's not going to be my AI who's going to respond to you. It's going to be me, right? So you can email direct email me directly. We'll put my email in the show notes, and I'm happy to connect you. Uh, I've already aligned myself with a few different universities and organizations and nonprofit um, industry associations who are putting on webinars free, right? Free to basically help the public, the business people, professionals really get up to speed on this technology because it's moving fast. And I mean, moving super fast. Every single day, there are new developments, right? New developments every day. And so the thing about not being an expert is it's as what I what I said at a recent conference was, look, if we go off of the the notion, which I believe in, it, uh, that, that, was, that Malcolm Gladwell wrote in his book, Outliers, the key theme in that book was that, you know, you really have to, it's a 10,000 hour rule. Many of you have heard it, right? But it's the notion that it takes approximately 10,000 hours of practice for you to become, um, you know, an expert in any particular field. And even in many cases, 10,000 hours is not enough, right? So it takes experience and you can only do that hands-on. So again, Understand that most people you're going to meet talking about AI, including myself today, are not experts. They are not, they're not like the people who are, um, you know, the thought leaders that, that, that started in this industry way before, way before all of this. So as I mentioned, the best thing that you can do is just go tinker with the, with the machine, you know, and, and that's what it is. It's a machine. And so you just, Get on there and start to ask questions and find projects that you may find uh, to be a, a time sucker, you know, for you. Uh, maybe it's sending out emails. Maybe it's creating certain tasks. Uh, one of the ones that I just did this morning for a client was we went into their Google Analytics. So you can do this with your web analytics too. You don't have to be using um, Google Analytics per se, which is basically the the insights from your website traffic right everything the number of users the number of pages that were visited how much time they spent on each page all that good all that good data there's hundreds of data points well typically you'd need a marketer or or someone who is uh, tech savvy right not most small businesses don't have a, a data scientist big big companies always have data scientists to crunch on this but for small business owners, it's typically your web guy, right? Your webmaster or, or some marketing person who pulls the reports and then you, you know, they'll feed you whatever they want to feed. But what I did was I went into uh, ChatGPT and I created a prompt, very basic, it basically said, you know, I want you to act uh, like a, a data scientist and I want you to analyze the data for the past 12 months and then it give me 10 key insights that I should focus on, actionable insights, and I'd like for you to give it to me in bullet points. Um, incredible. I went into Google Analytics. I pulled the data in a CSV file for the last 12 months. So it gave me everything about the users, whether it was mobile or, or desktop, whether, it, um, you know, what, what traffic was converting, where the sources of traffic are coming from. So all that information that you're going to find about anyone, any, any, anyone's website, your own website. So you take that data, take that command, you plug it into chat GPT, voila, within a few minutes, I had 10 actionable uh, insights, right? Uh, steps that I could share with my client. And I was very open about how we went about doing this. And we compared it to our own insights and how much crunching of the data we had to do to come up with similar insights. Um, forget it. You could spend hours doing that. But in the case of ChatGPT, it took a few minutes and it doesn't take a data a data expert. So for, for those of you who are marketers, because I hear this a lot, many marketers who love the creative side of marketing, but don't necessarily love the data side, I think this is like the best news ever. Same thing for salespeople. Salespeople who every day have to log into their CRM, every day have to log into uh, LinkedIn. All of a sudden, you have this opportunity where you can create uh, uh, interactions and templates 
for for the communication that you have with your clients with with your prospects it really takes you to the next level right takes you to the next level but what i want to share with you guys is uh also for as far as like a resource and you can email me but it bizhack bizhack.ai b-i-z-h-a-c-k.ai is an organization out of miami that we partner with and and we support them in uh, a few different ways, but they're doing a seven part series on marketing and sales. So AI for marketing and sales, and it runs all the way through the end of May. So check it out. You can come to the website and you're gonna find all that information there. So let, let, let me share with you some mind blowing stats. So, so that if at this point you're saying, okay, I'm still hearing all this chat GPT, you gave me some good examples, but, but you know, Tell, tell me what else about ChatGPT is such a big deal. Well, the big deal is that ChatGPT obtained over a million users within the first five days of its initial launch. That, that just doesn't happen. Not to Facebook, not TikTok, no other company in history. They had over 100 million users in the first month. That took Netflix two, three years. It took Facebook even longer, right? And right now they're seeing a billion daily uh, website visits. I mean, actually they're seeing a billion monthly website visits. That's a lot of visits every month, over a billion. And um, also the surveys has actually shown that 53% of people uh, cannot distinguish between AI, content created by AI and content created by humans. Uh, and, and that goes the same for images. So not just images, not just text, but also images. And another interesting uh, fact here is that 15% of the users are in the U.S., 85% are around the world, right? So the things you want to, again, that, that you want to learn about is how you can use it for every day for your, your you know, tasks, your email, your communication, creating images if you're in marketing, social media, creating ads, video, strategy, sales strategy, how, how to do lead scoring, how to forecast, how to predict, analytics. You can create guides. The list goes on. I mean, the, the use cases are endless, but it is important for you to try it out because I believe that in, in this year still, in 2023, you are going to see employers, employers who flat out say, if you have no experience with ChatGPT or AI to, to utilize in your job and make your make you more valuable to the organization, then you're not a candidate. So I really am urging everyone to take the time and learn this tool. Honestly, if you put 10 to 15 hours, you're already going to be way ahead of the curve. So this is not something that you, you're, you're going to have to spend a year to learn, right? It's not, it's, that's not what we're talking about. And you know, if you, if you explore the tool, Every couple, you know, every other day, let's say for 30 minutes, you will notice that you'll get better and better at it, right? And I'm sure most of you, <laughs> our listeners here, are already spending time listening to podcasts like I do, you know, using apps like I do, but, you know, you're on social media or LinkedIn, like most of us. So we already spend time on technology. Why not spend time on a technology that's actually going to help you, right? So um, another prompt that I did for marketing campaign, and I just shared it with our, our listeners and our subscriber, if you are a subscriber of the newsletter, was to just create a, a simple marketing campaign. And the prompt was, act as a seasoned marketing professional that specializes in launching products for the pet industry. And so, and then I said, and then I asked it to generate the top 10 frequently asked questions related to understanding the needs of pet owners, which is that target audience. And then I want I wanted ChatGPT to identify effective marketing strategies uh, and consider innovative approaches to uh, selling organic pet food. That was the product for this client, organic pet food. So, and then I also said, in addition to, uh, I want you to include relevant context regarding the product's features, benefits, um, and competitive landscape where where appropriate and, and it did all of that you know it, it went through i gave it the website the client website you can plug that into chat gpt and it went into there and and you know talked about like the free the free shipping the return policy the the organic ingredients that are used um all sorts of things so again 
you know, just a little example of a marketing campaign where many people sometimes, especially small business owners or solopreneurs who listen here to the show, some of you are busy parents, busy professionals. You, if you're not a marketing um, expert and you're leaning on one, this can only help you elevate that conversation with them and say, look, I played with chat GPT. Here's what I came up with. How can you utilize this to make us more successful, right? So really cool stuff. Some of the other ones that the tools within AI, most of these tools are using chat GPT or, or built on open AI's technology. Um, some of the other tools that I found really cool was uh, cohesive and that's just so that you can it, it'll help you create some prompts uh, pdf gpt it can summarize thousands of pdf pages auto gpt by agent gpt it'll create automation of tasks for you one that i really like was mixo m-i-x-o you can build a website or a landing page in minutes I mean, it's, it's incredible. So I'll put all of these in the show notes so that you have them there with the links. But, um, you know, look, we are at a moment in, in time where I think everyone is going to look back at 2023 and it's been tumultuous in, in, in the previous years with COVID. We had three years of COVID. Obviously, it's still happening, but at a lesser pace. And now that we're back and out there, uh, where there may be a recession, I think that the tool, the timing of this is really uh, exciting. It's exciting. I think it's going to make people better. Now, there are a lot of naysayers out there. No problem. There, there's always going to be people who want to resist. They wanted to resist the smartphones. They wanted to resist the calculators. Believe it or not, I had pulled up an ad earlier today from a um, a... LinkedIn post that I found so interesting. Let's see if I can find it here. It was an ad from a newspaper in 1987. Yeah, 1987. And this was the the headline, math teachers protest against calculators use, right? So they basically said that if, if students use calculators, that they would go, you know, wouldn't learn mathematics. The furthest thing from the truth, right? So Again, in history, we can go back in time, in ancient times even, you know, even before, let's say, Caterpillar was making huge um, earth-moving machinery and, and computers were built. I mean, Industrial Revolution, Information Age, all these different eras, it disrupted the economy, it disrupted the job and labor market, but people learned to adapt. That's where we are right now. So, take the time learn the tool, OpenAI's tool, uh, main product is ChatGPT. Get on there, Get either do the free account or $20 a month, start playing with it, show up to these webinars, and then just commit to every week, every month, go learn more. Because I, I'm telling you, I'm hearing it from uh, investment groups where they're saying, look, if you're a startup, you come to us, we're gonna ask you, how are you utilizing um, uh, ChatGPT and other AI tools? And if you're not utilizing it, we don't want, we don't even want to talk to you. That's how that's how important and disruptive this is. And of course, we hope that the government and Congress associations that they will put some regulation in place because on the other side, some of the naysayers are pointing out some of the negative uh, effects of AI and chat GPT, which there are certainly going to be, especially when you have something that is as ubiquitous and has grown as explosive as chat GPT has grown. So no doubt I, I'm, I'm all for some regulation so that there could be some guardrails there. Um, and I'm also, I think, you know, um, I think that it's important that they um, limit the, the age, which they didn't do that with social media, right? So I think companies like Khan Academy, they, they built their chatbot Conmigo. Our kids are using it. It's phenomenal. Really, it's like a, having a super tutor. And on the other hand, for the parents and the teachers, it's like having a teaching assistant. Super cool. And then I, I, I was going to mention the other company, Chegg, who, whose stock went down like 49% this week because, you know, they explained to their shareholders that ChatGPT has disrupted their, their business because they're in the education space. And guess what? ChatGPT does exactly what they do in a lot of ways. Um, and so their subscriber, um, their subscribership is down. 
right? And there are other companies too. Duolingo launched one called Max. Uh, and so all these other education companies are in like an arms race to make sure that uh, ChatGPT doesn't eat their lunch. And I think colleges and universities um, also, um, if they if they don't adopt and adapt and create, integrate this into their their curriculum, my goodness, I mean, then then it's just, um, I, I, I think that they're toast, you know? So for you as business owners, whether you're small, medium, or large, I, I think by next year, by the end of this year, I think we're going to enter 2024 into a space where, however regulated this is, we're going to enter into a space where you're going to need to know uh, the foundation, the basics of AI. It's not going to be a, a negotiation, right? It'll be as important as just showing up to work. And, and it's not going to be like your title has to be prompt engineer. It just has to be there that I know how to operate AI at the at the basic to me you know intermediate level but two new um um features that i wanted to talk to you about real quick was the in chat gpt was that now you can turn off the chat history which basically this then removes the all your new chats from your history and doesn't allow them to to use it to improve chat gpt in their in their model training I was a little bit worried about that because there were examples of companies who had used intellectual property uh, for their products and services. And once you put it into the system, then that, that means that they can share it with the rest of the world. So, you know, you, you don't want to share your trade secrets or company secret, secrets with the, the system. And then now they give you the option to do that. Basically, you turn off the history and then it doesn't go into the system. And then secondly, all the data that you create in there, you can export, you can save it and export it so that you have it as well. So I hope I've convinced you enough. I've I've honestly have never been so excited about a, in a, 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 a such an, a development in across all industries. As I said, I mean, it's really ubiquitous. It's across every field and what it can do for society i think um assuming we put some guardrails and add some regulations it's really exciting and i'm excited for marketers for salespeople, for ceos uh, you know solopreneurs educators there's just so much that we can do with this and become more powerful and and hopefully earn more i think this is what the the goal is of open AI and others in the AI industry. It's not just to make money, but it's to democratize um, everything. And I think it'll be more equal, not less equal. It will, it will help with the inequality issues that we have, you know, being able to give people an opportunity to get more education early on and take them to the next level. So I hope the episode was helpful for you that you understand AI and the importance of ChatGPT in your business. And I hope you go out there and um, start to adopt it and use it and see that it can save you time and money and make you more successful, not only in your business, your career, but also in your personal life. All right. Until the next episode, I'm your host, Alex Oliveira, and it's been a pleasure uh, chatting with you today. 